Hey, my friends, Derek here from Bomb Socks with a new week of Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ. And as always, we do it one bite at a time. So this week, uh, we're going into Noah and the Ark, one of the probably the most well-known stories in the in the Old Testament. I've heard them referred to as the and the stories, you know, like, or and the, David and Goliath, Daniel and the lion's den, you know, Jonah and the whale. This is Noah and the Ark, the ones that we are familiar with the most. They're great stories. Uh, I don't want to get so much into the particulars and the details and you know about Noah and the Ark. One of the things you could do if you wanted, uh, let me throw up some pictures here. If you're listening to this, uh, just some questions. How big was the Ark? This is just a few simple facts. How big was the Ark? How many people were on the Ark? How many of each animal were there? How old was Noah when the flood started? How long did it rain? Uh, how long was the water upon the earth? Now you could, you know, individual with family, you can go into Genesis 6 and 7, you can get all of those questions. So those are just some interesting things you can go in and just kind of see fun facts about the ark. So there is a, an important thing, I think, just to start off this week of, of studying about Noah and the ark. I want to show you what Noah's day was like, okay, what the time period was that he, he lived in and really how bad was the wickedness of his day because when we think about these people we're just like oh my gosh these people are horrible right God had to wipe them off the earth with a flood well let's look and see actually how wicked they were so there's a series of verses here I just want to share with you you start with Moses chapter 8 and you go to verses 13 through 15 it says Noah and his sons hearkened unto the Lord and gave heed and they were called the sons of God all right remember that phrase verse 14 and when the these men began to multiply upon the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. The sons of men saw that those daughters were fair, and they took them to wives even as they chose. Now you might seem like, hey, cool, these guys are getting married. Well, the footnote does say, uh, it says interfaith marriage. And, and again, that's a difficult thing to be able to navigate through, but you've got the sons of men, not the sons of God, sons of men marrying the daughters of God. So there is covenant marriage that is not being done right here. Uh, verse 15, it says, The Lord said unto Noah, The daughters of thy sons have sold themselves, for, behold, my anger is kindled against the sons of men, for they will not hearken unto my voice. And then you go down to verse 21, it says, And also, after they had heard him, they came up before him, saying, Behold, we are the sons of God. Have we not taken unto ourselves the daughters of men? And are we not eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage? And our wives bear unto us children, and the same are mighty men, which are likened to men of old, men of renown, and they hearkened not unto the words of Noah. So the first thing is, marriage, covenant marriage, is becoming something that people are ignoring, okay? So you go to the next thing, you got Moses chapter 8, verse 20, and it says, And it came to pass that Noah called upon the children of men that they should repent, but they hearkened not unto his words. Verse 24. Four, believe and repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, even as our fathers, and ye shall receive the Holy Ghost. There's your first principles and ordinances of the gospel. That ye may have all things made manifest, and if ye do not this, the floods will come in upon you. Nevertheless, they hearken not. So the people wouldn't repent and they wouldn't listen to Noah, who was the prophet. Okay, So you go to verse 22, it says... And God saw that the wickedness of men had become great in the earth, and every man was lifted up in the imagination of the thoughts of his heart, being only evil continually. So every man's thoughts were evil. Boy, when you're left to the, you're lifted up in the imaginations of your own heart, oh, that can be a dangerous, dangerous thing for us, all right? So Moses 8 verse 18 says, and in those days there were giants on the earth, and that's an interesting concept to play with, and they sought Noah to take away his life. But the Lord was with Noah, and the power of the Lord was upon him. You go down to verse 28, in Moses chapter 8. It says the earth was corrupt before God and it was filled with violence. So one of the problems was the earth was filled with violence. People lashing out at the prophet. Okay. Now you go back to chapter 7 of Moses. Moses 7, 26. And this is where, you know, we talked about this last week in a couple of episodes. How the Lord beheld Satan. He had a great chain in his hand and it veiled the whole face of the earth with darkness. And he looked up and laughed and his angels rejoiced. 28 and 29 of Moses 7. And it came to pass that the God of heaven looked upon the residue of the people and he wept. And Enoch bore record of it. And he said, how is it that the heavens weep and shed forth their tears as rain upon 
upon the mountains. And Enoch said unto the Lord, How is it that thou canst weep, seeing that thou art holy from all eternity to all eternity? So God is weeping because of the way people let Satan into their lives. Okay, so this list right here again, you got no covenant marriage. It's just something that people aren't doing. The people wouldn't repent or listen to the prophet. Every man's thoughts were evil. He's led into the imagination of his own heart. The earth was filled with violence. God wept because of the way people had let Satan into their lives. So all I can say, it's a good thing that that sounds nothing like our day, right? And the sad thing is, as you're listening and watching, that it does sound exactly like our day. And we are here to help prepare people for the second coming of the Lord. Now, you go into the Joseph Smith Matthew portion, which is Joseph Smith's um, understanding and translation of Matthew chapter 24. Uh, it says, but as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be also at the coming of the Son of Man. And we know that we are closer to the second coming than we were yesterday, right? Uh, and so you see the wickedness that's going on in our world, and it's not much different than the time of Noah. Now, I don't say that to you as a downer and just be like, hey, we're all going to hell. Have a great day. No, that's not what I'm doing. But what I'm doing is just showing you, you know, sometimes we look at these examples and we're just like, boy, it's a good thing we're not like that. Nah, we're actually pretty similar to things like that. And so you're going to see, and as I say that to you, that's not a downer. I say that to you to show you this week in our studies the goodness of God and the mercy of God as he is dealing with a group of people who is not much different than where they were in the times of Noah. So anyway, as, as we go through this week, I want you to keep those things in mind and look for the mercy of God. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for subscribing and thanks for sharing these messages. We love that. Go check out our amazing gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com and you guys have a great day. Godspeed. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.